Um, so for this video, I'm going to go through an example because this is the best way to describe this topic. So um, this is more about how to solve questions using your GDC. Um, and it relates to two functions. Um, the title I did in my lessons was um, intersection of two functions um, using a GTC calculator. Um, so this is a paper two style question. It's taken from your book from page 197. So this is the Oxford Math Studies book. Um, and this is from the review questions in the end. Um, it's quite a nice one because it has a lot of different properties that we've been doing in the chapter. So you have two functions um, and if you notice even though there's a divide by two, they're both actually quadratic functions. Um, so you'd expect to get a quadratic form. Now this is extra but it's important that you understand um, how functions work. So as you can see the, uh, the a here is 1 over 2. And so it's a concave up graph, so it's going to have something like this. And this has an A, let me do it there. So for G of X, you have um, A is equal to negative 1 over 2, and B is equal to 2, and C is equal to 0. And so you have a concave down property. So it's important that you identify these um, properties from the beginning. So the first part is calculate the coordinates of the points of intersection of the graphs. Um, it could say points of intersection. Another way they could say it is, um, so uh, we've seen these variations. They could say solve x over 2 equals 2 negative x squared over 2. Because points of intersection are basically what this means is when are they equal? When are they equal? There is a specific x if I put in here and here I'd get the same output. Um, now it says coordinates so there's probably more than one. And um, so you want to see when is x squared over 2 equals to negative x squared over 2. Now we could use the solver in your GDC calculator or you can use the graph, any method would work. Um, I'm going to solve it by hand first just to show you one method um, and then doing the second method. So it might say solve this. Another question might be in the form solve um, x squared over 2 plus um, Oops, I forgot the plus 2x here. Plus x squared over 2 minus 2x equals to 0. And if you notice, this is basically f of x. And this is g of x, but the signs have flipped. Okay, so it's a negative g of x. So notice that a negative sign changes the signs of your function. So if I put negative anything in here, it's going to change the signs. Um, that's what a negative does, and a positive give, keeps them the same. So the signs have changed, which means it's a negative g of x. So I want to know when is f of x, what, the solution to f of x minus g of x. And you can solve this if you want. Um, and you're going to end up with, um, you can skip this part if you don't want to do this method. Um, so x squared over 2 plus x squared over 2. I have 2 x squares over 2, so that's 2 x squares over 2. So you're just, it's like saying um, m plus m, because they're the exact same thing. So you have 2 m's, 2 m's. Um, minus 2 x equals to 0, and so you have these two cancel out, so you end up with x squared minus 2x equals to 0. And basically you want to know the solution to this. And you can find the solution using the GDC calculator. If you're more of an algebra person, you could um, continue solving this by hand. And you'd notice that the two solutions you're going to get are x equals to 0, so this comes from here, and x equals to 2, so this comes from this. So we found the x coordinate, but we need the y coordinate. So you can substitute x this x in one of the functions and this x in the uh, in, another, in the same function or another function and you're going to get the y coordinate. Um, so that's one method to do it. Um, so the much quicker method to do it if you want. I'd prefer the algebra but for the sake of time um, 
you could do um, you could use the GDC calculator simply just to find the points of intersection using the graph. Um, So you'd put your graphs in the calculator. So right where it says y equals, I'm going to put x squared over 2. And then in here, use brackets, please. So you have x negative x squared over 2 plus 2x. And you're going to graph this. And please watch previous videos to know how you can adjust the windows. But in this case, it's fine. So as you can see, the points of intersection are here. Now don't use the second table because it's not going to give it. Sometimes you're going to get nice numbers, but not every time. In this case, we will get nice numbers, but not necessarily. So if you notice that they, for x equals to 0, you get the same output. And for x equals to 2, you're getting the same output as well. So if you go back to the graph, let's just zoom in. And the zooming in is just to clarify. It's not to find the solutions just yet. So I'm zooming in in here, and it's going to show me the points of intersection much clearly. Um, to find them, you're just going to go second, and then calculate, or where it says trace. And then you're going to select intersect. And you're going to repeat what I'm going to do right now twice. So first time is to find one point of intersection. So you're going to move it and the very close to the point that you want. We're not talking about left bound, right bound. We're talking about the point itself. So the, gra the calculator is asking you, is this the first curve? So is Y1 your first curve? You're going to say yes. And then it's going to tell you, is Y2 your second curve? You're going to say yes. And then when it says guess, you need to press enter again, because this is a, a rough estimate of where it is. And it's going to give you the first point of intersection is 0, 0. So you're going to write it down as um, 0, 0 is the first point of intersection. Then you're going to repeat it again, and you're going to go to the second point of intersection. There might be three points of intersection. There might be one um, in different graphs, not this one, but you need to um, identify them. So again, second curve, yes, guess, yes. Intersection is 2, 2. Um, so again, don't use trace, don't use the table, use this method because it gives you more accurate numbers. So we have 2, 2, these are the points of intersection. So we've answered that. Um, find the equation for the axis of symmetry for the graph of y equals to g of um, x. So we know that the equation for axis of symmetry is x equals to negative b over 2a. One thing students forget is that you need an equation. So if you didn't write x equals, it would be wrong. Um, and we know what the b is. It's 2, so negative 2. And then the a is negative 1 over 2, so you can write 2. You can write negative 1 over 2. You could do negative 0 0.5. It's up to you. Um, so you can plug this into your calculator, and you're going to get um, 2 as the answer. So 2 is the axis of symmetry. Um, so if you want to know how I did that, the negatives cancel out. So you're left with 2, and then 2 is 0 0.5. Uh, 2 times 0 0.5 is just um, 1. So you have 2 over 1, or you can say um, the 2 is cancel, and then you're divided by 0 0.5. So, um, x equals to 2 is your axis of symmetry. Um, so we're done with that. Part C says um, the straight line with equation y equals to k. So it's just, um, it's, um, okay, let's continue reading it. Is a tangent to the graph of g. Find the value of k. Um, so if we need to go back to our graph. Um, the graph of g of x is, let me just, um, the graph of g of x is something like this, where the axis of symmetry is at 2, and we know that the coordinate 2, 2 is on the graph, so this is also 2. Um, the straight line, so it's any straight line, has an equation of y equals to k. It's not y equals to x. It's not y equals to um, 3x plus something. It's y equals to k. And y equals to k is a number. Um, and y equals to a number is just a, um, is just a horizontal line. 
Remember, horizontal lines have the form y equals to something. So this is a horizontal line, and it's tangent. So it touches. A tangent means that it touches the graph of G at one point only. Now, if I want to draw a horizontal line, um, if I want to draw a horizontal line that goes straight and it touches G of X at one point, if I do it here, well, it does it's not a tangent because uh, it doesn't touch G of X. If I go here, well, it touches at two points, so there's it doesn't actually do that. So if you notice, it's actually at X equals to two. So it's supposed to be here. So it touches just the tip of the graph, so actually Y equals to two in this case. So this is just a a different way of describing a property of the graph. Um, don't worry too much about these things, just as long as you understand the definition, you understand how your graph behaves, you'd be able to find the answers to these. So y equals to two, and so k is equal to two. Um, the value of k is two, and the equation is y equals to two. Uh, part D says sketch the graph, so it's just a sketch. Uh, using rectangular Cartesian coordinates, so you need one centimeter as the unit. So you're going to do the one centimeter graphing, but obviously your points don't have to be as accurate because it's a curve, but you need to show, so you're going to get something. Um, so this is g of x, and then you're going to get this. Now, if it said, um, if it didn't say use Cartesian coordinates with one centimeter as units, it means it's a rough sketch just like I did. But because it's specified, then you'd have to uh, be at least ac a bit accurate. So you're going to graph g of x, graph f of x, and you're going to show the points of intersection, um, but you're going to try and keep it as accurate as possible as long as these points show. Um, so that's the... That's what you need to show. Um, show the coordinates of any points of intersection. Um, part E is finding the values of x for which um, for which f of x is less than g of x. So this is a different way of describing um, a set of numbers. So let's try and understand what it means. So I want to know, and you can use different ways to answer this. So you could say, um, when, when are the output values of f of x less than g of x? So when is the y? So we're talking about y here. So when's, uh, when are the y values of f of x less than g of x? Um, but when is described using the x values. So what x values would give you y less, um, would, what x values would give you f of x less than g of x? Um, oops, I'm breaking it down in a different um, different wording, so we've used this wording. Another way to see it is to look at the actual graph. So let me do f of x in a different color. So this is your. So this is your f of x, um, and your g of x is here. This is two, I think. Um, so f of x and g of x. And what you want to see is when is the yellow less than the green? And less just means below. And you're more specifically looking at the y-axis. So when are the y values of um, the yellow curve less than the green? And it's in this area. So starting from here up to here. So we're focusing on, we're looking at specifically um, this area. And this starts from x equals to what? x equals to 0 until x equals to 2. So the values for which x is less than this is when x is between 0 and 2. Now. Does it include zero? No, because it will then be f of x 
equals to g of x. So it does not include zero, it's strictly greater than zero. And x values, all of these, all of these are accurate until two, but it doesn't include two because otherwise it would be, they would be equal. So you're looking at um, this. It's a long, weird um, explanation, but it's uh, much easier than I've made it seem. You just look at the graph, you look at where is the specific one, so you're considering f of x is less than g of x, so you're going to look at when is it below the graph, when is the f graph below the, uh, the g graph, and then you're going to look at the x value, so you need the x values that would give you this property. And then decide what signs you're going to use. You can say, you could describe it in words if you're confused, but try your best to answer this question as accurately as possible. Um, hopefully, this um, video is helpful. So, this is as much as um, this covers as much in regarding um, this chapter. And um, you can use different, um, you can then apply everything you've learned into real life situations. So, the book has a lot of questions on those as well.